When we downsized from our lifestyle block to a small urban property, I had to rethink how chickens and a garden could still be part of our lifestyle. I needed a bespoke designed, purpose-built construction that would be my ultimate suburban hen house. I think there must be lots of people who would love to have chickens but live in town. So in my last few videos, I've been sharing with you the process I've been going through and the design principles that are important for a small hen house. The location, the size and proportions, some access doors, and all the ventilation requirements to keep it comfortable in sun and shade, summer and winter. So this is the final design plan. And here is how we built it, with basic construction skills and equipment, and a modest budget. The first step was to make the foundation for the floor. We knew we wanted the floor to be 1 metre by 1.8 metres, so we framed up a box of that size out of ground treated timber sold for retaining walls. I've used a lot of this timber to make my low raised garden beds, mostly because it's cheap and readily available. If you can say anything is readily available in these times of uncertain shipping. These planks have a groove on one edge and a tongue on the other, so they slot together neatly, but that's not really an essential part of the design. We made the foundation box two planks high, that's 360 millimetres, just over a foot, because this part of our yard is a bit low lying, and we needed to keep the floor of the chicken house dry. It's all held together with a length of 100 by 100 fence post in each corner, which is buried about a foot into the ground. We put two bearers across the middle of the foundation box to provide bracing for the floor. Next on was the floor itself, simply cut from a sheet of 18mm thick exterior plywood and screwed directly down over the foundation frame. All of the walls will be built on top of the floor. We used exterior treated plywood for the floor because it's likely to get damp, either from chicken poop or while I'm cleaning out the chicken house, but I've painted it so there's no risk of the chickens coming into contact with the timber treated chemicals. We prefabricated the north and south walls following the design plan. We used framing pine for the framing. It's 45 by 70 millimetres, about equivalent to 3 by 2 inches. You can tell it's treated because it's pink. A lot of New Zealand houses are built with wooden frames, and this H1.2 grade of framing timber is widely used. It's colour coded pink to indicate that it's treated with boron, which is a very safe product. The first wall we built was the wall that adjoins the chicken run. It has the main south door in it, and also the nest box, so the framing has to include a brace along the top and bottom of the nest box. The bottom edge of each wall is made of two lengths of framing timber set perpendicular to each other. This gives a lot of strength and provides a flat surface to screw the wall down to the floor, as well as a flat surface to attach the plywood cladding. The wall coverings are untreated 12mm plywood sheets. Since they're not treated, they need a good protective coating of paint on the edges as well as the sides. My last chicken house was also clad in untreated but painted plywood, and even after 15 years of winters when a bit of rain came through one corner, 
the walls were still in perfectly serviceable condition. We cut the plywood sheet to the required sizes and nailed it over the framing. Although the wall framing is sitting on top of the floor, the wall cladding is outside that all the way around, and the wall cladding actually extends below the level of the floor, so that the rain will drip down past floor level and from there to the ground. You might also notice we left the plywood to cover right over where the nest box will be. We will cut out the hole for the nest box once we're ready. Once we had built the foundation and the floor and had prefabricated the north and south walls, we were ready for the day of putting up the walls. First we put the south wall into place next to the chicken run. and screwed the wall framing down to the floor. We held it vertical with some temporary diagonal bracing. Then we did the same with the prefabricated north wall. Now the side walls already have their vertical framing because the vertical framing on the north and south walls also serve as the vertical framing for the side walls. So all the side walls need is the horizontal framing screwed between the uprights that are already in place. The horizontal framing provides strength, but they also serve another purpose. The lower one is positioned at the correct height for the roosting bar or perch, and the upper one will be the bottom of the window. Now we have walls, we can put up the ceiling. It's simply a sheet of the same 12mm untreated plywood that we used for the walls, cut to size so that it overhangs the walls on all sides and it's screwed directly down onto the wall framing. Fortunately, the hen house is big enough for me to stand inside, but not so high that I can't reach the ceiling. I don't even need a ladder. Thank you. 
As I mentioned, the untreated plywood needs to be painted. I chose to paint it white to reflect as much summer heat as possible. I covered considerations of sun and shade in more detail in my last video. The slope of the ceiling is only 100 millimeters over the distance of a meter, which is not very steep. Over the top of the plywood ceiling, we put a layer of translucent corrugated polycarbonate, partly to provide some protection from the rain, and partly to add that extra layer above the ceiling to allow air to circulate and keep the ceiling cool in summer. The polycarbonate is attached using special galvanised roofing screws through the top of the corrugations. The screws go through 10mm holes which allow for expansion of the polycarbonate. Drilling the holes is easiest if you turn the polycarb sheet over and drill through what is now the valleys of the corrugations. Now we add the mesh to the top of the side walls. This mesh allows for cross ventilation up above the chickens' heads. It's just a plastic coated steel mesh sold in garden and hardware stores. I originally bought a roll of it to make a door for my old chicken run. It's pretty strong and easy to work with. Even though part of this area will be covered by a window, the mesh covers the whole area at the top of the side walls, so that even when the windows are open, the chickens are kept in and the pests are kept out. We tacked the mesh onto the wall framing with fencing staples and then screwed the wall cladding over the top. At this stage, the chickens don't have access to the new hen house because of the original wire netting sides of the chicken run. The doors are constructed much like the walls with pine framing clad in 12mm untreated plywood. The clear polycarbonate panels are simply screwed over the opening left at the top of the doors. We selected door hinges that could be screwed onto the outside of the door panels, yet still allow the doors to open wide. Most hinges that you have on doors in your house are designed to be put inside the door jamb, so they're invisible when the door is closed. If we'd used hinges like this, we would have had to have a bigger gap down the hinge side of the door, which could be drafty, or needed to add a door frame, which would be more complicated. We used a simple bolt to hold the two doors closed, and bolts at the top and bottom of the right hand door, so I can just open the left hand door and leave the right one closed. Once the north double doors are in place, our hen house is closed in. So we cut away the netting of the chicken run where the main south door and nest box will extend into the run. The chickens now have access to the new hen house, but they're a bit shy to go in.
The main south door is constructed much the same way as the two double doors, except that it also has the little pop door for the chickens. Cutting the pop door in half meant we needed four hinges compared to just one if we'd hinged it as a flap above the pop door, but I like the effect. The perch is simply a length of smooth, untreated pine. The thickness isn't important as long as it's strong enough to hold a few chickens, but it's wide enough for the chickens to rest their breastbone on when they're sleeping. One of my earliest videos is about perches. Like the perches in all of my chicken houses, it's easily removable, so I can quickly check underneath it for red mites and easily shift it out of my way when I'm moving around the hen house. We made the window frames just like the doors, a rectangular frame with clear corrugated polycarbonate screwed over the top. Even the bottom of the window is well above the chickens' heads when they're on the perch, so the windows don't need to be sealed. The air movement through the corrugations is appropriate ventilation. We added a length of framing across the side walls at the level of the top of the window so we could screw the window to the chicken house using the hinges. The trickiest part of the window construction was actually finding an adjustable window stay so I could lock the window wide open or just a little bit open or anything in between. We eventually found these window stays which do just what I wanted but because of the geometry of the way they open we had to add a little block of wood on the outside of the wall and attach the window stay to the block. Now they work perfectly. At this point, my young hens were not yet laying, so the nest box was the last bit of construction that we did. The thought of cutting a hole in that wall was a bit daunting. The nest box itself is basically a box with one wall missing. We made it out of the same untreated 12mm plywood as the hen house walls with tiny framing on five joints. Because it fits inside the walls of the hen house and rests on the horizontal framing, the slope for the lid needs to start some way out from the back of the box and the lid isn't the whole depth of the top. Once the box is constructed, we just pushed it through the hole we'd made. Fortunately, our measurements were bang on. 
and then we screwed it to the vertical and horizontal framing in the hen house. The hinged lid will extend out over the walls of the nest box on all sides so the rain doesn't run into the nest box. Underneath the lid there's a frame around three sides and a shorter piece of framing across the back. The gaps on each side of this shorter piece are to allow the lid to fit over the sides of the nest box. But the lid can't cover the whole of the top of the nest box. There needs to be a fixed bit at the top so the lid can open properly and will stay open without falling down all the time. This is a tricky little piece, L-shaped with a short frame at the ends, again so that the rain will fall off and down to the ground. Once we're sure it's right, We glued it into place with lots of glue to try and seal the joint against the rain. Then added the lid, secured by its hinges. But as I mentioned in my video about doors, even our careful sealing of the joint didn't stop rain getting into the nest box when we had a heavy storm. So we added another strip between the wall and the hinges to divert the flow of water sideways and off the nest box lid. Finally, on the inside of the nest box, we added a low wall to keep the straw from just falling out of the nest box when the hen is scratching around in there. So that's how we constructed my ultimate suburban hen house. I hope you've enjoyed following along with me and have found along the way some lessons that you can use in designing and building your own hen house. I think it's the best way to get exactly what you need, exactly what suits the purpose for you, your situation and your chickens. Everything <laughs> to this happy home. <laughs>